Hang on, you guys, I'll come in. You guys, you guys doing good. You guys are doing good, boy. Just hang on. I'll just set this up. Hang on, hang on. Just hang on. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. You had better come and say hello. You had better come and say hello, boy. You had better say hello. You had better say hello. You better get in here and say hello. What? Say hello. What? 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 You're doing good, boy. You're doing good. You better say hello, younger. Huh? Good, good, good. So I have the two letters together again. The Tecla <coughs> and Bona pups. And uh, they're starting to go home now. So I wanted to take this time while I still have them together to talk a little bit about the genetic diversity <coughs> we're a preservation breeder so the number one thing for us is to preserve the genetics and by doing that we have to maintain the maximum genetic diversity that we can and so this particular set of pups is a very very good example together and dogs wow dogs that are more diverse the parents are way far unrelated are healthier stronger and it's better for the breed and so the more diverse you can have your litters the better it is for the dog better for the breed And uh, it's, uh, it's apparent in this world because you can see the diversity from the genetics. If you look at just these two pups or these two pups or this two pups, you can see that there's bloodlines from many different types of Elkons in here. And uh, just in this particular group, I mean, I'll start with, say, Tecla's mother. Tecla's the mother of some of these pups. So Tecla's mother camp, her dad was an import. And uh, her mom was first generation in Canada. A Norway dog. Uh, a very, very good line. So Tecla's father is first generation in Canada. Again, a really, really good Norway line. Now, the father of Tecla's litter is Lee. Now, he's an import, of course, from the USA and runs a very, very strong genetic background. We have these guys here. They're Vaughn's pups, and they're their father, Karu. Karu is a Finnish import. Now, Vaughn, of course, She carries the Vida Gata lineage as well as Tecla Dakota. And so there's a lot of Sweden influenced Norwegian Alcon dogs in here as well. Loki is the father of, of uh, Vana. Loki was a son of Tecla and Pretty Boy Lee. He was raised here. 
and what we end up with with Bram on both sides of these pups, of course, is that very old hunt line coming out of there, and then you get the bear lines coming in through these guys through Gata and Dakota. Bud is out there as well. Bud was raised here. Bud is the grandmother to these little guys. So it's a it's a pretty cool uh, diverse mix. We have all the bloodline coming in from the UK as well, and that bloodline is the Ravenstone, and that lineage was sourced primarily out of Norway and Sweden, some Finland. So there's a lot of countries represented very close to the surface on these on these ducks. And you can see the, the different types in here. This is very showy. This is the big show dogs. The big coastal dogs. Heavy, thick boys. And you can see the black here, the interior dogs, the inland dogs, all the dark Swedish roots, the Finnish roots, the northern Finland dogs. This is a pup, of course, right out of Finland, best lineage of hunting elk hounds up there. And so these guys are black as coal. Now, in the elk hounds, of course, you also, years ago, and we're talking a long time ago, but an old breeder was sitting with a dog just like this. And so he liked that color, so he kept it. And then he went to a hunting trial one day and saw another one there, and pretty soon they started mating them black ones together. And a long time passed, that's how the black elk hunt started. It's just right out of a litter, just like this. And exactly the same thing for the white elk hunts. It was a breeder got a litter of jam tons one time, and there's a white, really light colored pup, so they kept it. And they were at a hunting trial, and they saw another one. And that's how those types get separated out. But in North America, the primary goal for most breeders is to breed to a standard that was set up so that the judging and the, the confirmation and all of that was very, very similar. Now, a lot of breeders bred specifically only for that. They didn't breed for genetic diversity. In fact, they went against genetic diversity in some cases to really go for a, a look, a style. And uh, so the the breed itself is is not enhanced uh, by that philosophy, and many bloodlines were bred out. Like for example, that that magnificent male there uh, in the show world. Any of the judges, because they're so blinded, they would they would not rate this guy only because of his color. He's the most personable of the bunch, the smartest of the bunch, the most fearless of the bunch, the toughest of the bunch, the best designed of the bunch, but the judges, you see, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, recognize that because they ha they've lost all touch with reality and with the ancient ways and the old lines. But you go over to the finish where they focus on hunt, and there comes a pup right out of Karoo. Right? So they understand the difference. And Karoo's mother, of course, is a, is a Finnish beauty champ. She's also a Finnish bear champ and Finnish moose champ. So uh, this is what comes out of the Europeans. This is primarily heavy show influence right here, in North American show influence. Now this got a ton of working bloodline in it, so these dogs are, are full on serious working dogs. But at the same time you can see the difference in genetics. Now Leaf was brought in to preserve the working dogs. And so he gets to preserve that whole Tecla group, that whole Tuba Tecla 
Kai, Tika, all of them working outcomes. Leaf was brought in to preserve them, and he's done a phenomenal job on it. And you can't fault these show dogs, they're fantastic dogs. And what it does with a breeder like me is it gives a ton of diversity. Because you can come in now on Carew's daughters with Leaf, you can bring Carew in on Leaf daughters. That's what's happening in there. That's Leaf's daughter bred to Carew. So you get, you know, almost 9,000 miles between stud dogs. So that so diverse is kind of funny. Leaf's genetics are 70 plus years in North America. Carew's have never been out of Finland. So you get a very, very diverse set of dogs there. And of course, Tecla's background and Dakota's background, very, very ancient old dogs. The lineage that's in these pups here, you see, is nowhere else. They're so, they're so unique, these dogs. But a very, very diverse set of genetics. And that's what leads to great things for the outcome breed, is diversity. We want to all breed for diversity. That gives us a longer slowdown to the eventual disappearance of unique genetics. And every time a female is retired, of course, you lose a certain genetic component out of the breed. Every time a male is retired, out goes that particular genetic. So the more that we can diversify, the longer we can push off all the dogs being the same. If you look at the Golden Retrievers, they focus so much on the show that everybody chased a certain stud dog. And of course, that stud dog was used close to 1,800 pups. And total nightmare. And then they found out a couple of years later that there was a problem with that stud after everybody had used them. Now in the old world principles, you would never use a stud more than 200. And it, you'd have to be a maniac to have enough females to use a stud to sire 200 pups. That's a, that's a lot, of, lot of litters. But uh, that's what happens when you follow a certain look and style, you get everybody going after the same stud and all of a sudden you've got a whole bunch of the breed that is compromised. Your Dobermans, the same way, right? They've all got that heart issue, or, well not all, but uh, probably 60 some percent of the breed has that problem, has that issue. And so it's a it's a tremendous amount of work to, to now salvage that and get that out of there. It's like the little blacks when, when they, uh, quite a few years ago there was very few blacks getting bred, very few getting rescued, and there was, there was nobody really registering any. There, there really isn't any breeders in North America. I believe there's only about two 200, maybe 150 a year registered overseas. So it's a small select group. But uh, it, it, should be, it should be kept no matter what. They should do whatever they got to do. And breeders should step up and help to keep that, keep that genetic there and keep it going. Because every time you lose a genetic, it's, it's not coming back. You can't bring it back. And understanding the concept that genetics are continually diminishing every time you retire a female. That's where most people don't quite understand the concepts. That's why shortening up litter cycles, having less litters out of females, that's all nonsense. It's a bad idea. Bad idea. You want your females to go as long as possible. And this is a prime example. Tecla has those pups, and she's the great-grandmother of these pups.
so you can stretch the genetic changes out for many, many years. There's been lots of genetic changes through through to get to these these guys, whereas these guys now haven't had any. So there's been two or three genetic changes to here, but only one there. Now, these guys have an advantage because Gaeta was extremely old when we took her last litter, and Dakota was even older. So we had very little change to Vida. And Vida, of course, was out of that miracle litter, out of them old dogs. Because the combined age of those two was pretty close to 20. Dakota and Gade, but they were highly prolific. Very, very fertile dogs. And so then we had, uh, who's uh, tearing me up back there? It must be, uh, who is that? Who is that? Oh, that's one of my big boys. Jesus. Jesus. Just ripping things up. These are non-rip, non-skid pants. So we'll find out. We'll find out. They sure sounded like you were ripping them. <laughs> but that could have been my shirt, mister. That could have been my shirt. You're just tearing it up. You're just tearing it up. These boys are so good. Oh my God, they're good boys. Yeah, amazing big fellas. We had such a fun time out to site today. I had them all out. We went for a good hike. It was good. They're tired now. So yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about that genetic diversity before I let them go. Because I won't have this chance again for a little bit. Your guys are good, boy. I tell you what, you guys are good. So we'll get rolling. Good. You guys did good. Holy cow. My ankle went to sleep right there. You guys did good, boy.